Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our introductory conversation. My name is Joe, and with me I have my two colleagues from the Chopra organization, Dr. Sherry Sampson and Coach Sherry Wu. Hello, my friends. Hi, Hi Joe. Hi, Sherry. Hi. So <laughs> good to be with you today. Uh, we're going to spend a little time introducing ourselves and explaining what it is that we do as Chopra teachers. And we're also going to talk uh, about how destination retreats have kind of played a role in each of our own journeys. And we're also gonna share some exciting news about the retreat that we are planning in November uh, in Costa Rica. So I think a good place to start is the beginning with these retreats. I met both of you down in Mexico at a Chopra retreat. But you two had known each other from before, um, also at a different retreat you met. Um, and Dr. Sherry, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about that initial retreat where you two met and your decision to, to go there and make the commitment to attend. Yeah, sure. I'd love to. So um, I did not set out to go on a meditation retreat at all. I was just looking to fill a week uh, vacation. Um, and interestingly enough, for many, many years, friends had been telling me I should meditate. And of course, I tried, you know, the usual um, audios and DVDs and books and you know, guided meditations. And as a very busy professional and an A-type person, I never really got much out of guided meditations aside from just a few minutes of relaxation. So when this opportunity to go to the in-person meditation retreat came up, um, you know, I spoke with uh, one of the program directors at the Chopra Center and, you know, he played it up nicely and said that Deepak would be there. And I think that was like the real reason I went, but when I got there, um, I was just floored by the number of synchronicities that were occurring. And I met some amazing people there, including Sherry. And um, I actually had a breakthrough in my meditation practice for the very first time. And I know that had I not attended an in-person retreat with other people, who were there specifically to learn simple ways to meditate, I'm not sure I ever would have developed the practice that I have now. So what I took home with me after the retreat was a habit, um, an easy way to create a habit of a daily meditation practice. And it came in so much, um, it, it became so handy, especially um, as COVID began, like about a month or six weeks after that course. And as well, I enjoyed it so much. I was so impressed. I wanted to take my learning to the next level. So I signed up for their educators course, their um, certified meditation instructor course, not thinking I would ever become a meditation teacher. And lo and behold, here I am now a certified meditation teacher. So um, I would love to share that with, with everybody, but that was how I met Sherry at that retreat. And that's how I got into, you know, regular meditation practice. Yeah. So, uh, it sounds like it was pretty transformational in Florida. And Absolutely. I've, said, I've said this before. I'm, I have reverse FOMO. I wish that I could have been there with both of you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, Coach Sherry, you had, this was not, when you met Sherry down in Florida, that wasn't your first retreat, was it? That was something that you'd done before? No, that was my first retreat. Actually, I, for my meditation experience, it was on and off, on and off by myself, which is, I just do my own. I don't know if that can, can be called meditation, but I do because I was a dancer. So on, before I on stage, I always find myself at this place and I can quiet down to settle before I do the performance. So when I heard about that meditation retreat, I always want to go, but it never happened. It just did not happen. So I believe that everything happened for a reason and the right timing is the key. So, you know, everything changed, everything merged together 
you know, one to the other when the right time is coming. So what happened to me is 2019, the things happened suddenly because my husband is busy for his business and my daughter, my, my son went to college. So instantly I become a, you know, um, empty nester. So with that desires and intention inside of me for a long time, and I always, I long to go. And suddenly I have an opportunity to go because I have a time and money is not a problem. And information, I just keep receiving from the Trooper Center. I have the retreat, it's coming up, it's coming up. It just feel like a calling. It just feel yeah. like a, it's time to go. Then there's no reason for me to say no, since everything has happened already there together because the time I have and the intention, desire I want to, and also financially for that time, it's no problem. Everything's just there. There's no reason for me not going. So I went and I met Sherry. I met Dr. Sherry, I was very happy. And the moment I went there, I feel the energy is different. The energy bring me more, um, more the energy encouraging me to do more. I just feel like I meet so many people from the States, even from the national, from the different country. And it was an amazing experience. And become a teacher, become a coach is my best decision. Because when I decide I want to become a teacher, certified teacher, certified Ayurveda teacher, and become a well-being coach, that's the best I feel I can face myself. I found myself. And it compelled me to share with others because I noticed that when I share with others, I learn more. The more I give, then the more I receive. So that's why I feel so good because I face my shadow. The things I use not to do it, and I become able to do it. When I'm able to do it, then I am confident to do it. And the more I am confident, the more I want to do it. It's just, a, you know, so positive one way follow the other. So that's my experience to, you know, to go to the Chupa retreat. I am so great. I'm so grateful I made that decision. So that changed my life. So that's what my story to start my meditation as meditation teacher and a well-being coach. So I hope, you know, I can help more people. So how about Joe? What did you do? What did you, what make you to go to the uh, retreat we met in Mexico? Well, uh, the, the retreat in Mexico with Chopra was not my first uh, retreat, but um, I do agree with you. I, I do think that there's something to the group mentality and there's something about traveling to one of these events uh, with the set and setting and the intention of learning something new and being with like-minded people. I think that there's a lot of positive energy in these group settings. And so I think uh, I don't I don't know if I would have been able to to do that at any of the retreats really that I've been to. Um, each one being different uh, for a different purpose. But uh, what really made me want to go down to Mexico was something similar to you, Sherry. I felt kind of a calling to go down there. I felt that it was the right time. Um, there were synchronicities in my life that allowed the travel and allowed me to get um, time off of my day job to go to the to the retreat and make the plans. And so as I was thinking about it, and as I was expressing my wishes to go, the universe was just kind of lining things up for me. And so that's kind of how I made it down to Mexico. And um, I'm, I'm so glad I did. You know, I, I, I think that we learned a lot down there as, as a group, as, you know, going through the, the coaching and the, um, uh, the different uh, modules that they had set up for us. I feel like was really uh, conducive to our learning. And I think that's maybe the best part about these retreats, like I said, is the opportunity to step outside of your normal routine and focus on something new for an extended period of time. Yeah, and, exactly. And uh, I, I really think you can get great results. And, you know, uh, Coach Sherry, it sounds like you um, were have been able to really kind of turn your life around and, uh, you know, accomplished some amazing things since you started uh, meditating uh, with the technique that that Chopra uh, teaches. 
Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Like uh, how your life has changed or, or what has, has, has improved with this daily routine of meditating and, and yoga and Ayurveda? Oh, yes. Um, as a dancer, I was on stage all the time since I was young. And it was a very stressful life, just like a Dr. Sherry, you know, just a different lifestyle, but they're all <laughs> equally stressed. Okay. Yeah. Before I have a trouble to, you know, before I go on stage, I always nervous, but people don't tell. But inside of me, I know I'm nervous because how can you bring your energy to show people, then bring people's energy up? just for watching you, right? So you have to have that high energy. So I always feel like I'm short of energy before I go on. That's why I have to find a place to feel settled before I start my show, okay? So that on and off, on and off is carry on for all my life. So every time when I do a big things, big decision or something that I'm nervous, even though nobody knows, but I know, okay? When I know, then it doesn't change until I went to the meditation, when I have the technique. When I have the technique, then I start to learn how to calm down myself. I learned the chakra. I learned how to, you know, settle myself and ground myself, but using my energy to work on something I want to do. So these things take a practice. So meditation in the morning, twice a day, in the morning and before dinner in the evening, it's like the morning I tune in with myself, I reconnect with myself. So I tell myself I'm ready for my day. And in the evening, I reflect my life for all day. What did I do? Then am I doing right? What can I learn? So those two things keep me calm. So when I'm calm, then my mind is clear. Because, you know, just like at the pond, the water, if you stir the water, the sand is coming up and you cannot see anything. So when I calm myself, I see myself. I clear my mind and make a conscious decision. So when I have a conscious decision choice, everything becomes easier. I choose who I want to spend time with. I choose what I want to eat, what I want to you know, spend time, what I want to deal with. So I don't have to take whatever the, the universe throw to me. I choose what I want to do because I'm clear. But without the meditation, I can't do that because life is overwhelm. Everything is happening. Every single minute, I have a family, I have a work, I have a children, I have a husband, I have my original family. Everybody has everybody's need. I cannot satisfy everyone. I don't even can satisfy myself. But with meditation, I help myself. I feel I'm the most important person. But I learn I'm not selfish. Because you learn you are the most important. You have that love for yourself. Then that love can extend it for other people. You see people are happy, you are happier. So that's what, how I feel. When I do a little bit for other people, people are happy, say thank you. I'm even happier. So when I do that, and I say, ah, oh, meditation does change my life because I really feel the inner joy which money cannot buy. I used to feel money can buy everything. You know, I have a money, I can do this, I can money, I can do that. But that little part, money cannot buy. Only when I share the things with people, I bring the peace for people. Then I have that inner joy. That inner joy continue give me creativity. So continue give me power and energy I can share with others. That's why a lot of times when I hear, when I meet people, people don't share it with your energy. Even though when I have the coaching, you know, course, then I feel people tell me, Sherry, look at your energy. Yeah, I didn't know, but I realized I affect a lot of people. So I'm proud of myself because the course I took, because the meditation, I learned to ground, because the Ayurveda, I know how to eat to make my physical body healthy and energetically. And because I learned the coach, I helping people. So all these things happen at the right time that I'm happy. I'm so glad I did it. If I didn't go take this course, then I would never see the best version of myself. So that's about my story. My life totally changed after year of 60. So I'm happier. <laughs> Thank you. So how about you, Dr. Sherry? Yeah, talk about your life changes. Let's hear it. Yeah. Well, um, 
what hasn't changed? So, I mean, yeah. number one, as I mentioned before, you know, this practice um, came to me very synchronistically one month, not only before COVID, well, our awareness of COVID came out, but my mother also passed away. And the pain and heartache of that could normally be unbearable for most people. But I immediately knew, even through my tears and the depths of my pain, that, oh my gosh, wow, I have this meditation practice and this is great. I'm going to do this every single day, even though the tears are flowing and see what happens and see if the experience of grieving my mother will be different than the pain I experienced in grieving my father, which lasted 15 years. I mean, I never got over the passing of my father, but lo and behold, that experiment worked because after just a few weeks, I really settled in and I started to understand more about why things happened, why she had to leave the earth at this time. And so I know the meditation practice helped me with that, with my grief. It doesn't take the pain away. It doesn't make a, a, a difficult experience or challenging experience like non-existent or not occur. We will still experience difficult things in our lives, whether it's the loss of a loved one, whether it's um, a diagnosis, um, whether it's a financial problem, we'll still go through life's challenges. But meditation allows us to become, you know, more calm, to process the emotions in a more healthy way. Um, it helps us accept the emotions that are coming up so that we don't bury it with distraction, with bad habits, with drugs, alcohol, addictions, or, you know, even just numbing out on digital media. And the second thing that was immediately apparent was with this COVID circulating, even though I'm healthy, I knew as a medical doctor that my immune system was absolutely number one to keep in check. And how do you do that when in the first weeks and months, the entire planet thought we were all going to die? I mean, we really believed, we were led to believe that millions and millions, if not billions of people were going to die. And that kind of existential threat or perception of an existential threat is it's terrifying. I don't think I need to explain the level of stress that most of us were feeling because we all experienced it. But I, I have to say, and I could now proudly say this out loud because I really couldn't say it during COVID, people found it offensive, but I can say that this meditation practice allowed me to basically sit in the eye of this storm with every like piece of news, like whirling around me like a giant hurricane and um, really just remain calm and be able to not just make decisions that were right for me and my family and how to go to work and deal with patients and sick patients and worry about my own, you know, potential demise with three children as a single mom, this meditation practice allowed me to sail through COVID. And I'm not exaggerating that. I am literally like telling the truth, my truth for me. Um, there were hard times, but it, it really changed my life. And I think with, I know without the meditation practice that COVID would have had a much more detrimental effect on me. I would have allowed the stress to get to me and anxiety. I wouldn't have slept well. My immune system would have been shot because that's what stress does. And chances are I would have gotten sick from all the exposure I had in the hospital. And I never did. I never caught it. And I also very quickly was able to really tap into intuitively what felt right about the news that was coming out. So I spent a lot of time studying the science, but um, you know, my intuition helped guide me really. And then more than that, I became started to become more creative, more dreaming, more, more. Um, 
vivid dreams were happening. I was sleeping better and I was interacting with my children who were all living in my house at the time. You know, they came back from college because of COVID and we just had a grand old time, like hanging out together. You know, there was some irritation, some challenges that came up, especially with one of my children. Um, and my meditation practice gave me new insight, new perspective. So when one of my children would be acting out, you know, um, the young adult that he was or the stress that we were dealing with, I was really able to kind of step outside and view this almost as a third party. So becoming a more responsive parent. And as a result, my son turned a situation around that could have gone a completely different direction graduated college having done very well and landed like a killer job. So, you know, that's just another example of how we can be better people, not just for ourselves to deal with our own emotions and experiences, how we can keep our health in check vis-a-vis our immune system. And there's many, many other health benefits, but how we can also interact with other people. So those are just some of the benefits and, and those are pretty tremendous, I would say. So I'm, I'm really, really thrilled how such a simple practice has had such a beneficial effect on my life, you know? Absolutely. It's kind of hard to, uh, people ask me this question all the time, uh, especially new students that are curious about learning to meditate they ask me what the benefits are and I tell them, well, I don't know <laughs> what they're going to be for you, but I can tell you that as you go, they will multiply upon each other. And so it's, it's kind of hard to talk about the benefits without also talking about change, because as you change, I feel like the benefits that you experience change with you. And as you grow, you open up new doors and you realize how many more doors are open just because of the previous door, right? So exactly. uh, it's totally changed my life in many of the same ways that both of you uh, discussed. And, uh, you know, having been to Costa Rica in the past year or so, I can say that uh, I think it's probably the perfect spot to go to learn uh, this toolbox and learn this set of skills and it's just so beautiful down there and so connected with, uh, you know, the rhythms of nature and the rhythms of the earth. I am very excited to be able to deliver this material to people and share it with others uh, so they can then spread it to their worlds. And so I'm curious, what, um, what about, what is it about Costa Rica that you're looking forward to, Dr. Sherry? What do you, what do you think? Well, <laughs> I, I'm in love with Costa Rica myself. My first experiences were there um, due to this, this habit I have uh, with the ocean. Um, so I am a surfer and so very connected to the ocean and to nature. And I began that practice after my divorce, so just that practice that like, you know, made sport activity hobby. But for me, you know what? It is a spiritual practice. Surfing really was a spiritual practice. But so my exposure to Costa Rica was prior to my learning how to meditate. And then I really, you know, I think I just naturally evolved into understanding surfing being a, a spiritual practice in doing it. And then it was a natural evolution to the meditation and the two really go together. So although we're not primary, this is not a primary activity, it's available to us. So that's something that I am excited about. But mostly what I love about Costa Rica is that it's a very um, unspoiled environment, so to speak. Um, yes, there's tourism, but not as much as other South and Central American countries and certainly other you know, vacation destinations. So the country puts a lot of effort, you know, the government that is and the people into really protecting the environment. Um, you know, the rainforests and the ocean and the two meet together and you have mountains and waterfalls and hiking and beautiful unspoiled ocean and, and sandy beaches. And so we really are going to have this incredible environment, um, you know, 
and these exposure to the sounds of nature and wild animals and monkeys and all kinds of birds and parrots. And the food there is unspoiled as well. The food is very natural, organic, um, and it just really nourishes not only your body, but your soul. So Costa Rica is a, is a perfect place for people to not only, you know, um, explore the natural beauty there and, um, you know, the kindness and the compassion of the people, but we're going to be in an environment where we're gone from the distractions of modern life, Western life, digital life, and it will really allow us to not only be, um, to deliver this information to people who want to learn, but the students will be, um, in an environment where they really can just focus on themselves and, and taking in that information in this beautiful environment. So um, that's for me what Costa Rica is. Um, it's just a beautiful, unspoiled, well-protected country with, with beautiful people. I don't know how else to summarize it, but- There's you know. something about the energy there, I think. And I think that your I, I agree with you. I think surfing is a totally spiritual practice and it's a, um, I feel like it's a great, uh, metaphor for life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, are you going to sit on the shore and watch the waves? Are you going to learn to surf? Right. Um, and I would argue that learning to surf is the real way to live your life. And, uh, I would agree with you about Costa Rica, you know, um, natural paradise, sounds and rhythms of nature, the ocean and jungle, fresh local food, uh, you know, a chance to rest and really focus on yourself and growing into a new way of living. And I also think that traveling is ritualistic, especially for these retreats, because a lot of the work that's going on in these retreats is, is invisible. We're learning how to meditate. We're learning how to connect with ourselves spiritually um, and make sense of our inner world and with this type of stuff, there's not a lot of visible markers or landmarks. Uh, so making the choice to travel somewhere and uh, you know spend resources to go to a place is uh, a way to kind of ritualize that learning. And it reinforces the invisible commitment that you're making to yourself. So I think that Costa Rica um, uh, is, is gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Very well hey. said. Yeah, thank you for that. So can I just give like a like a brief little summary of what kind of things people can expect if they're going to? Absolutely. Okay, so, so the three of us are all Chopra certified in meditation and Ayurveda. And Sherry is also a well-being coach, which incorporates more of these incredible, um, you know, practices. So we're going to do daily meditation. We're not just going to meditate though. We're going to teach you the benefits, the scientific and biologic and physiologic benefits of meditation. You're going to get tips and tricks to make it an easy practice. So you're going to want to take it home and it's going to be more easy to make it a habit so that it's effective in your life. And then you're going to learn a little bit about the backgrounds, a little bit about the you know ancient tradition and how it came to be, a little bit of the Vedic knowledge and some more about consciousness. You know, we'll just touch upon those things, and you're going to really enjoy those things. And we're going to do yoga every day, led by Sherry Wu. And I'm a yoga teacher student. I'm in training, so hopefully I'll get an opportunity to like practice my skills as well. But we have a very experienced beautiful yoga instructor, Sherry. And Joe is a very talented musician and he's going to um, bless us, adorn us with the beautiful sounds and vibration of his sound bowls and sound healing. And um, we're gonna really enjoy that. We're going to have a few um, excursions set up. You know, right now we're looking at a waterfall and hiking. Um, the learn to surf adventure, it's on the table, but, you know, depending on interest, it's, we could do more of it, or we could even do another excursion, but right now that's on the docket. And, um, 
we're going to get to explore this property all to ourselves. The retreat property um, is booked just for our retreat participants. So we're going to have a lot of private spaces to do walking meditations, journaling um, in the jungle, in the different yoga shalas, in the different beautiful garden spaces, tropical areas, as well as walks to the beach and around the property. So that's, that's another exciting thing. And we're, of course, we're going to enjoy uh, community meals together by a private chef, organic vegan food. Um, and uh, we're going to follow up with some coaching a little bit before with some quizzes and self inquiry. And we're going to be following up with our participants as well to make sure that you're, you know, utilizing the information you've learned and you're able to implement it and we want you to be successful we don't want you to just you know just enjoy that's that's absolute we want you to enjoy but we also want you to take this home and really bring this incredible retreat with you so that you can have real transformation in your life and um yeah that's that's about the summary um there may yeah. be some surprises in there we may have some reiki treatments um some spa massage and some other things that you can add on but it's going to be very exciting and all the participants will also receive a gift a welcome gift i have something i want to mention about it because for the yoga the yoga is a very important part of our retreat because yoga is the thing to keep your body moving right so the only times we can enjoy the most is when your mind, your body, and uh, your thinking, your movement, your breathing all together. A lot of times we have a difficulty for our life. We suffer for our life. It's because we're thinking something else, but we're doing something separate. So when, we, when, we, when our mind and our, our body are separate, then you won't enjoy the peace within because you are totally separate. So doing the yoga, a lot of people think about it is doing something upside down, something fancy, which is impossible to make it. No, we, we are not doing that. We, I'm going to teach you very simple yoga for you to experience. What do you mean by thinking, action, breathing all together? Once you have those three things together, you stay in the present. Once you stay in the present, then you are part of Costa Rica. You are not a visitor to the Costa Rica. Okay. We are part of that. We enjoy the whole thing with the nature. We are in it. We are not watch it. Okay. So yoga is not a big deal for you to say, oh, I don't know how to do it. I cannot upside down. I cannot do the foil. No, you don't have to. You don't have to do that. We do very simple one unless you have something you want to go deeper. But in general, it's a very simple beginner level. Everybody is all level. Everybody can join. You can do deeper, you do it. Okay. If you cannot, we have a lot of modification. So it's easy for everyone. All right. All right. I love that. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for explaining that, and especially about the pranayam, the breath work, because that's really important to incorporate with the yoga. Exactly. So, oh, yeah. What else? Well, I can say, um, you know, I, uh, with the sound healing, there will be uh, multiple uh, sound healing sessions throughout the week. And if you've never been to a intentional uh, sound bath or a sound meditation where sound is being used intentionally as medicine, it's really an experience and you can't really put it into words what it feels like when you're in the room with the bowls. So very excited to share that with everyone. And I have visions of, you know, jungle sounds that are, you know, forming a backdrop for what I'm going to do with these bowls. So very Love excited it. to share that Amazing. with everyone. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Then there's another thing that I would like to share is that you can tell as I am most, most likely is the action one. Okay. So besides the yoga is the physical doing things. Then I like Joe's doing the sound bowl as quiet things. Then we do the chakra dance. It's the, also the moving meditation. Oh, we yes. use it. How did I forget yes. that? Well, that was <laughs> one of the surprises. <laughs> we use the specific music. But you know, there's a chakra. There's seven chakras there that we need to go from the ground, you know, the base chakra all the way to your crown. 
then you can get all the resources. So we, in order to activate our chakra, we need to move. So when we move, we need to have a specific music. I love Joe's mention about the jungle music because that's good, suitable for our base chakra. The base chakra, then we move into the sacral chakra, then we move into the, the solar plexus, then we move into your heart, then we move into expression, we move into your third eye, then we are there. Okay, so the action chakra dance can help you to stay in the present too. Just like a yoga, help you stay in the present because conscious breathing, you know, most of us, we do the autopilot because when we're born, we breathe already. If we don't breathe, we die, right? But no, now we're breathing consciously with your thinking and with your action. So when those three things together, oh my God, you got to change your life. You got to enjoy the present moment, no fears for others. So that's, I think everybody will enjoy. Thank you, yeah. Sherry. Yeah, so I think, I think we've all kind of um, highlighted what, uh, how all inclusive and how unique this offering uh, of proven methods uh, really is. You know, we're, we're not talking about just yoga. We're not talking about just being cooked for. We're talking about, you know, learning a, a set of skills and, and, and learning about a routine that really has the, the power to help you to change your own life. And uh, I, I don't think really any of us are, are aware of the impact that uh, this retreat will create. Uh, I, I know that uh, we are very aware of the power of this practice. Um, and uh, so I guess I'm just really excited for, for other people to, um, to get involved and to start feeling the benefits of what we have to share. Um, so before we wrap, uh, up here, Dr. Sherry, is there anything else that we need to, to explain at this point? I think that we're going to have some details about, uh, about the retreat and how to sign up and how to save your spot and everything in, uh, the caption below this video, perhaps. Yeah. So we're going to, um, we'll add the link below the video. If this is posted on Instagram, the link will be in our bios in our um, respective bios. Um, but we'll also add the link um, below. And, um, you know, this uh, retreat is going to be held November 11th through the 18th of this year. Um, so it's coming up four and a half months away in Costa Rica. Um, it's all inclusive except for flights. So the only thing you, additional you need to purchase are your flights. Um, all the information is available in the link um, on the, the web page. And um, you can DM any one of us, um, Doc Sherry on Instagram or um, at getintothegap.com or Sherry Wu. You can um, say your, your website address and um, Joe as well. Um, but I think if you click at the link, that'll be the easiest way. Spots are limited and anybody who mentions this webinar is going to be able to get um, the discount that um, has run out the early bird discount, but we're excited to still offer it to anybody who mentions this webinar. And, um, and you could always message any one of us with any questions. We could set up a phone call and answer your questions individually as well. Sometimes if you're unsure, you know, especially if, you know, you don't want to spend the money, but you know, it's something you really want to do. Talk to us, ask us any questions and any one of us can set up an appointment, a 30 minute phone call or you know, whatever it is you feel that you need. So Sherry, why don't you just mention your Instagram address and we can also write it out in the comments below. And Joe, um, you can go ahead and list your information as well. Yeah, so uh, my platform, my education platform is called Rhythmic Alchemy. So it's Rhythmic Alchemy um, with an underscore in between the two words on Instagram. And then uh, rhythmic-alchemy.com is uh, kind of my online home where I keep all of my stuff. Uh, and then Sherry, you have your own platform as well, Coach Sherry. Yeah, CoachSherryWood.com. So you can see it, uh, my post with yoga, with meditation, with we're living the whole well-being. So that's all we want to do. We're living our life. Sleeping well, eating well, eating healthy, and be happy. 
And Sherry, your Instagram is under your name, Sherry, Sherry. S H E R R Y, and your last name is R R Y dot W U U dot W U U. But <laughs> yes. we will write them out at the bottom of this um, video, and you have the links, and we'll make sure you have all the information. And please reach out if you have any questions. Otherwise, you can click click the link, and you can register directly there. Thank you so much, everybody. And Joe, thank you for taking the time to, to you, set up this interview. And Sherry, awesome. thank you for your amazing yeah. energy. And thank you, Sherry. I'm really excited. Thank you, guys. Thank Bye -bye. you.